Good evening, Lou Hamilton from Audible Elegance here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on Montgomery Road, just a few doors north of the Montgomery Inn and across the street from Montgomery Cyclery. So there's two wonderful places to visit while you're up here. And um, I do want you to, you know, to subscribe. It really helps us out. And um, take the time to go to our website and you can link into our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram accounts. Uh, Instagram. Enjoy what you get to read and, and see because it's different than some of my videos. Tonight, tonight I want to talk about what it means to be a quality dealer and how manufacturers frustrate us. And, you know, the first mission of a quality dealer um, is, is not to spend their time hunting down products that are the most popular where the most advertising money is spent um, so that they'll just simply write the sale as opposed to make it and show the customer why they need this product. And it goes much, much deeper than that. Um, our first responsibility is to find a quality product that performs well and performs well in a very, very competitive sense. In other words, are there other products out there that aren't nearly as good or you know somewhat as good as what we're looking at uh, to present you the buyer? Um, because our goal is to get the, the maximum amount of performance for the least amount of dollars. And I know that sounds kind of weird because a, a lot of the models today are the maximum amount of dollars and performance, well, it really doesn't matter or it's kind of good and they'll, they'll be happy and they won't know any difference because they're not gonna look around. Um, Following that it comes a whole series of things the customer never gets to see. Um, you know, if you ran a business where you just, you know, you know, the customer just clicks the button and it's shipped, um, they're missing out on a lot. Uh, number one is, you know, you should have knowledgeable people who not only know about the product, but can also resolve your problems. And this becomes very important in the relationship between the dealer uh, and the manufacturer in terms of what we call product support. And, you know, if we have a problem and we have to wait two, three, four weeks to get an answer from a manufacturer, particularly their service departments, that's no good. Um, particularly if you're starting to run into a series of problems. So we've had products in the past where uh, we started out with them and he said, no, this is no good. This is not in the best interest of our customers. Um, and right alongside of that is the need to make sure that the manufacturer we're representing is not going to end up orphaning the customer, either in terms of uh, they're not being around uh, or that the type of product they're producing is not going to get support long term. And that's a real major problem because I'm sure many of you have had a problem with, you know, I don't care, you know, if it's a microwave or anything like that. You know, they just look at you and say, well, you have to buy a new one because the parts aren't available. That's not really ideal. And we try to avoid that as best we can. So that's where product support, um, not only in parts availability, but in helping us resolve problems to the customer quickly and efficiently becomes very, very important. And in today's age where, um, you know, the button push is all you need, uh, there's been a number of companies who are simply starting to fail uh, to provide the customer support that we need to take care of our customers. And um, on a few occasions, we've gone so far as to actually get grief uh, from the manufacturer about the pursuit of that type of information. And... You know, what a lot of manufacturers fail to understand is that um, we are their customer, and that's the relationship. And that has to be as strong and as firm as the relationship we want with our customers. Um, to us, um, when you buy XYZ product, we're the customer, you're the end user. And the end user looks to us to help them with their problem. Um, and that's the relationship we accept as far, you know, in, in, as, far as being you know, a, a land-based real store uh, operation. And um, there's a lot of, of operations out there that 
yeah, it's quick and easy, and maybe you get free shipping, but uh, if something goes wrong, well, good luck. Uh, there's some others that are pretty good. I don't know why I have to admit that. So <clears throat> that's what's real important. The other thing that gets real important for small dealers is we have to receive product in a timely fashion. And this has become more and more of a nightmare for us, um, for the independents, which is why manufacturers are responsible for why you don't have a local store anymore. And um, what they'll do is they'll put up their own website to sell direct. Um, and on the argument that, well, there's not enough dealers out there, and there's some people in some parts of the country that, you know, want to buy our product and there's no one available. Well, I, I follow the logic of that a bit, but a lot of manufacturers, uh, and, and we've had to deal with this on more than one occasion, where their website, if you click the button and they promise immediate shipment and they show it in stock, when we've placed orders for a similar item, they'll tell us we're on back order or it's not available. So sometimes we have to call, you know, a week or two and find out, you know, where's our stuff? Uh, and we've had some manufacturers play the game as much as three or four weeks. You know, this is not COVID problems, people. This is about how a manufacturer is not supporting the dealers that, you know, they claim to want. And so, you know, I apologize in the sense that sometimes it takes us a little bit to get the product, but we don't know where the truth lies. If we get into this probable deniability game of whether they really have it or not. So uh, we've actually taken to the sport of going to their website and pre preparing to do everything to order it and then send them a screenshot of it saying, okay, I can order directly from you, but why am I on back order? You know, why is my relationship with my customer being screwed up because, frankly, you don't have your shit together. Uh, or is your intention something else? You know. And um, so that interferes with the relationship, you know, we, we try to do with customers. Um, I just had one a, a few weeks ago. I think I, I got a nice Google review on it. The guy called up about a problem with a product that we sold 28 years ago. Maybe 30 and I was able to give him enough information as to where to look and what to check to help him understand um, how to help, you know, try to resolve his problem. And um, he did all of the testing and such that I suggested he do with the product that he had. It was actually a system. And um, unfortunately, um, he kind of narrowed it down to the speakers. And, and what we were talking about were Lynn Cans. And um, the Lynn Can speaker was basically a, a very self-contained sealed speaker. Uh, so taking it apart takes a lot of care uh, without screwing something up. And uh, you know, he found somebody up in New York who uh, claimed to have the knowledge and was willing to do it. And I haven't heard the results, but at least he was able to identify down where his problem could, could lie. And I was very thankful for the review. And um, but that's that's what a good dealer does. I mean, uh, we we don't abandon the customer the minute there's a problem. When we do encounter a problem uh, with a product, we are not paid by the manufacturer to fix it. Um, you know, they may give you the parts under warranty. But the cost of the labor and the time and effort to make the repair, um, they don't pay us. And we're put in the awkward position of, uh, of an expense. And, um, you know, when a customer gets a, a, a five-year warranty, for example, um, they expect that, you know, the parts and labor are covered. Um, one of my favorites was years ago when we represented BMW, and I don't know what BMW policies are today, so don't go there. Um, they made it clear their their warranty was for parts, um, but no, uh, there was no warranty on the labor. That was up to the dealer to whether to charge the customer or not. Well, you know, that puts us in a really awkward position because I know if I were a buyer of a product, 
I would assume that parts and labor are covered, you know. So, you know, the guys who are offering you push a button and save 15%, they're not going to take care of you, you know, uh, which is why we've had to get to the point now that if you haven't bought it from us, we can't take care of you because we can't afford to cover the cost uh, of a promise not kept by someone else. And, and that's the only way I can say it. And uh, it's really it's sad in a way, but it is what it is. But manufacturers are doing a lot, either not delivering product, and God help you if you ask for literature, um, getting information about the technical aspects and some manufacturers is, is almost hopeless. And this gets in the way of us doing our job. So um, I just wanted to talk about what a good quality dealer does, what it should do. Um, how the manufacturers can get in the way of this being accomplished. Uh, so I'm picking with them tonight uh, because I just had two cases this week where I was dealing with it. And um, <clears throat> it's not fair to the customer. It simply isn't. And um, the customer being the end user you, but it's also not fair to us because we can't uh, provide the service that you need. So if you run into this problem with, with your local dealer, you know, take the time maybe to ask him, why, why are you not able to take care of this quicker? And you might just learn that whatever product you own, um, that the manufacturer itself is providing uh, all of the problems to the whole situation and that the dealer is doing everything they can to try to resolve it. And um, it's not to say you shouldn't put a little heat on the dealer, but you know, if the dealer tells you this is the problem, you know, maybe you ought to pick up the phone and say, hey, I've got a problem with your product. Why aren't you helping um, this dealer resolve it for me? What's your problem? Put the heat where it belongs, not on the dealer. Um, but, uh, you know, it's always easier to, to, to go to the local shop and pick on the human as opposed to try to deal with somebody who's, you know, playing dodgems on you, I guess. But, you know, please understand we're doing everything we can to resolve the problems, but they create them. So, um, you know, the manufacturers have made a complete mess of distribution of how business is done. Um, I've got friends who are... Who are um, you know, cabinet makers and stuff and, 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 and the nightmares that they have to go through anymore. Um, it's insane. It, it truly is insane. So have a little patience, but, you know, please understand we're doing everything we can to take care of you. And, and sometimes the manufacturer is really the one who's getting in the way.